In this part of the lesson, we'll explain how to use an input box to ask the user for some basic text input. You don't need any files for this part of the lesson, so let's start by opening up Excel and then creating a brand new blank workbook. We can then open the Visual Basic Editor, insert a module, and then create a new subroutine called Basic Input Box. To display an input box on screen, we can call the input box function. If I press Ctrl and Space and look in the IntelliSense list for an input box, I can then type in a space and look at the tooltip to see how many parameters the input box has. So there are seven altogether, one compulsory parameter, which is prompt, and the input box will return a value as a string. Let's make the input box ask the user what their name is. So I'm going to set the prompt of the input box to be equal to a little instruction that says enter your name. Now we can simply run the subroutine to see what the input box looks like. And it's a little bit basic admittedly, but it's certainly sufficient for entering a simple bit of data into the text box. So we could type in our name. Obviously that's not my real name, but we'll go with it for now. When we click OK, of course, currently the value doesn't go anywhere. We'll deal with capturing the value shortly. What I'd like to do next is just customize the input box a little more. There isn't a huge amount you can do to modify it. It's not quite as complicated as a message box where you can display different symbols and so on. But we can change the title of the input box. So let's add a space underscore so we can take this down to in the next line and then type in a comma to move on to the next parameter, which I'm going to name as title. So the argument that I'd like to pass into the title parameter will be something simple like identify yourself. If I now run the subroutine again, we can see that the title of the input box has been customized as well as its prompt. Now let's deal with how we capture the result of the input box. One sensible location to store the input box result is in a variable. And we already know what type the input box returns. We saw it in the tooltip earlier on where the input box function returns a string. So let's declare a variable that can hold a string value. We'll say dim your name as string. We can then assign a value to the your name variable using the input box function. So we can say your name equals input box. And now because we're returning a value from the input box, we're actually using it as a function. We'll need to enclose its arguments in a set of parentheses without a set of round brackets around the argument list. There's a syntax error. So after the input box keyword, we can type in an open parenthesis. And then at the end of the argument list, a closed parenthesis. We can use some debugging techniques just to reassure ourselves that we are returning the value correctly to the your name variable. So let's start by viewing the locals window from the view menu. And then if we begin stepping through the subroutine using the F8 key, we can see that currently the value of your name is an empty string as we would expect when we first initialize the variable. As we continue stepping through the procedure, we can type in a name into the input box. And then when we click OK to return to the VB editor, we should find that whatever we've typed in has now been successfully captured in the variable. We can now make use of the value in some way. Perhaps we could display it back to the user in the form of a message box. Let's just reset the procedure at this point and then add a single instruction at the end of the subroutine that we'll call the message box function and then concatenate the word hello to whatever value is stored in the your name variable. If we simply run the subroutine again, we can enter a name and then we'll be welcomed to the system. Not a particularly exciting example, but it's enough to demonstrate how you capture information from an input box, store it in a variable and then reference it again later.